Hello, beautiful people. I am Sarah Poet, and this video is about women and performance. I just recently got off of a um, phone call with a client, a client session, and this woman was trying to recover trust in the masculine and in provision. These are things we hear a lot about in the feminine, masculine kind of spiritual community. So I want to speak to this topic. And if this is for you, oh boy, like it's going to be for you. So a few years ago, at the end of a relationship, I was in like a shadow work session with the man who I was in relationship with and we were wondering if it was the end of the relationship. My intuition told me it was the end of the relationship and yet I was still trying to hang on because we lived together and, and so um, it was a big deal. And at the end of the shadow work session, this is probably like the fodder for a whole other set of shadow work sessions, but at the end of the session, what happened is like, I threw down my pen and it slammed on the clipboard. And I said, what do I have to do? I don't understand what I have to do. And that moment was such a, like a moment of awareness for me because in and of that question, like, is the shadow. What do I have to do? Just somebody tell me what I have to do already. So women, do you relate to that question? You know, fill in the blank. What do I have to do to earn a man's love? What do I have to do to receive provision? What do I have to do to, you know, receive money? Like, what do I have to do for God to love me? You know, fill in the blank. So we have actually been like primed and taught and like enculturated to be good little women, like good little girls that were very like well behaved. And, um, you know, in that being well behaved, maybe we would get our needs met, maybe we would get our resources met. Um, and it's been this way, you know, for generations of women before us, right? Because we needed to behave or perform just correctly so that women historically and now have had access to, you know, opportunities um, like <laughs> love or like a man to take care of them or enough resources for their children. You know, women have been asking this question very historically, what do I have to do? So doing is performance. Doing is performance. When we are in that orientation, what do I have to do in order for things to be okay? How hard do I have to work? How much do I have to do? How much do I have to check off my to-do list? When we're in that orientation, we're in what I call performance, okay? And like that is disconnected from the divine. That is disconnected from like how we are to actually be using our energy, but more on that in a minute. First, I wanna kind of dive into a little segue about inner feminine and inner masculine. I like to look at the inner alchemy because it's a place of personal power. So you all have, we all have an inner feminine, inner masculine, and they are interacting at any time. There's plenty more in my work for you to learn about this and, and discover that you can reach out to me. I did a whole TEDx on it, okay? So in this scenario, when you're in performance, the inner feminine in that like, what do I have to do? She's collapsed, she's not empowered and she's not connected to source consciousness. She's looking for the masculine to provide for her. Hello, patriarchy. Okay, so as she's looking for the masculine to provide for her, and she's like, you know, is this going to be God that provides to me for me? Is it going to be like the outside world? Is it going to be daddy? Is it going to be like my inner masculine? Like what is, you know, what's going to provide for me? She's collapsed. I'm using pronouns, but I'm talking about the inner feminine masculine. So that, that inner energy of the feminine is collapsed. It's like not empowered. Then. The masculine energy within says, okay, well, I don't know what to do. So I'm going to just perform. I'm just going to like do a bunch of tasks. I'm just going to try to make you happy. 
Okay. And so it actually wastes a ton of energy, a ton of energy. Performance depletes women. It wastes energy. That's a whole other topic. Are you noticing that this dynamic with the inner feminine and inner masculine also plays out in plenty of relationships between men and women? How many men do you know who are kind of running around saying, how can I please you? Meanwhile, the woman is trying to figure out everything under the sun that has to happen, every single box that needs to be checked off for her to feel secure. So this dynamic is everywhere, everywhere. I'm sure you can think of plenty of examples within yourself and in relationships that you know right now. So in this video, what I want to talk about is for women is a solution like what is the alternative? What do we, um, you know, want to realize and practice instead of the performance energy? That's what this is about. So the solution, women, is to have a devotional practice. Now, this is a remembrance of the feminine, of the divine feminine, of course. And these are practices such as, you know, a moving yoga, a dance, a sensuality practice, an embodiment practice. Um, yes, meditation, but like also mystical practices that get you in touch with your feminine wisdom. So you also want to be cultivating that. You want to be cultivating your divine listening. You want to be cultivating your inner intuition. And so you have your devotional practice, like maybe you dance, you know, it's not performative. It's not for anybody but you and the sacred, whatever that means to you. And so you have this practice and then maybe you like offer up a question or like, what is my next right move? Or what is the next thing that wants to be created through me, right? Because as the, the feminine, as a woman is like in this sacred practice and they're listening and we are, um, you know, maybe dancing, maybe like singing, maybe like creating something, that's the divine moving through you first and foremost. Like that's the our archetype of the muse. And so as you are like becoming this, you know, channel this like vessel for the divine and you like offer up these questions, what's going to come is an intuition about what your next right action is. So this is the difference between performance and busyness because we're stressed, we're not going to have our needs met. And now we're bridging into what is my next divinely inspired right action. I don't know about you, but if I'm using my energy, I want to be taking right action and not wasting my energy. And if I'm in a relationship with a man, I want him to be taking right action, wasting no energy because his right action is going to amplify results. I don't want a man who wants to be busy pleasing me and wasting life force energy. I want a man who is taking right action, okay? You see, these are inner, these are relational. They're global, okay? So you might be asking yourself, is it really enough? Is this really enough? You know, will I really have my needs met? Will I really make my manifestations if I step out of performance and more into trust? Note, you're not trusting an external masculine. You're trusting your own relationship with the divine, okay? This is so healing for women. And this is like, I'm touching into some things that are like bigger and of course we need to practice and, and attune to. I wanna say one more thing because if you're tracking this, I know that like you're meant to be here and there's one more piece I wanna give you, okay? We are taught, and this is very rampant in spiritual circles, we are taught that the masculine is the energy or the essence that does the providing. I've even heard that the masculine is, you know, the wisdom or the consciousness that you hear when you're meditating. No. 
no, no, no. There's, there's so much distortion in even the spiritual idea that the masculine only is responsible for provision. And this is what I'll ask you to kind of dip into this. You know, what creates a baby? You have a masculine seed, and then you have a womb that that seed implants into. There's a merging, there's a new creation. So yes, does the masculine provide something? Absolutely. Does the feminine provide something also? Absolutely. Does the feminine provide the gestational womb for that thing to come through? Absolutely. So, you know, the, you call it the great mother, the great father, call it holy mother, holy father, call it the cosmic feminine, cosmic masculine. By all names, both are required for a creation. Therefore, both are required for your manifestation. So if you are a woman and you are sitting on the meditation cushion and you are in devotional practice, or if you are a woman and you are in a dancing devotional practice and you lift up, like or you're, you know, you're channeling this muse archetype and you lift up that to which you want an answer to. And you and you offer it up and, and you say, like, I really, you know, desire to experience. Um, a new living situation. How would you like me to create and how would you like me to use my energy to, you know, move toward the manifestation? I don't like the word manifestation. That's why I use these like air quotes. The manifestation of the new living situation, the creation, the creational outcome of the new living situation. So you're sitting there and you like put this up. It goes into, you know, a space, like the quantum field, the, the all it is, right? And then there's like, you know, Holy Mother could have some input. Holy Father could have some input. What you hear is divine information. And what you hear and then what you do with that information is, of course, your choice. But as you like receive it, Technically, I would say that you're in your feminine if you're receiving the information. And then when you take action, you're in your masculine as you're taking action. So when you're receiving, when you're like in the muse, when you're putting it up, when you're in the desire, when you're receiving, you're in your feminine. When it goes up and, and into the ethers, let's say, it's not that you are like praying to a masculine or to a feminine. You are in creation zone, okay? And then you, like, again, you receive it. And then there's the action in that is in an alignment to the information that you received. When you take the action that is in alignment with what you have received, you are in rightful use of your life force energy. You are in like the creational alignment with the divine, with your soul, with the all that is, and with that which is meant to be, which is very, very different, vastly different than performance energy. So I hope that this is inspiring. I hope that it informs your, you know, practices around how you cultivate desire and receptivity and, you know, your manifestation practices. And for the love of all good things, please use less energy in the, you know, space of performance. They're like, I just have to do it to get it done. I just have to do it because what do I have to do to receive less energy there and more energy in the like co-creative, cultivated space with the sacred, with the divine, with your inner feminine and masculine and with the feminine and masculine that is eternal and all providing. 
so, so much love to you on your journey. If this video is inspiring to you or helps you, there are a few things that you can check out. All of them are at sarahpoet.com. There is a monthly membership where we are cultivating women's community, talking about all of these things. Members of that community are welcome to schedule private sessions with me. And I also do longer term um, coaching and intervention with couples and um, people of any gender who are on a feminine and masculine reunification path. You can schedule a consultation to see if we are a fit after reading the information on my website, sarahpoet.com. Thank you for listening. And if this video was inspiring, please drop a comment and let me and others know. Thank you.